Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today for part two of this two-part pajama series. I previously published how to sew the top and today we are going to be sewing the bottoms here. So this has an elastic waistband and it has these cute cuffed hems that we're going to be sewing on these fitted pajama bottoms today. Now there is a free size 4T pattern on my site and that is um, linked below on how to get that. Make sure you read the instructions in that. There's also a link in that post for a pattern in my shop that is sizes 18 months to eight years old in case you need a different size than the free one. You can go ahead and buy it. It comes with all the sizes. So go ahead and get your pattern together and then let's get sewing. To sew the pants, I've got um, pants, two pants legs here, and notice that one seam is longer than the other. This is the back of the pants, and then I've got two pant cuffs, and I've got elastic for the waist. So the first step to sew this is going to be to place the two legs right sides together, and you want to line up these curved front and back crotch seams. And we're going to stitch those using a stretch stitch. I'm going to take this over to my serger to do this, but you could also do it on a sewing machine using a zigzag or any other kind of stretch stitch. While I'm over at the machine, I am also going to go ahead and sew up the cuffs. I want to fold these and the direction of stretch arrow on the pattern piece goes this way. So I want to make sure that I am folding it um, the same way that the arrow points for the direction of stretch on the fabric and do that right sides together. And then I'm going to stitch down that edge to make these cuffs. So I'll just go ahead and do all of that at once with the machine and set my elastic aside for now. Here is what the pants and cuffs look like once I have stitched them together. I'm gonna set the cuffs aside for now. What I want to do with the pants is open them up now so I can form two legs. I want to match up those crotch seams, and because this is going to have a waistband later, I want one seam allowance pointing this way and the other one pointing that way. That will make sure that up at the waist, they're all going around in the same direction, which will make it easier to put the elastic in later. And then I want to match up, fold in half the leg, and match up that inseam on each side. And then I'm going to stitch all in one go across the two inseams. Here is what the pants seam looks like once it is sewn. And what I want to do next is I want to fold down a waist casing. So this seam allowance is already pointed this way. And I just want to fold down so that this will cover my elastic. All right, so once I stitch, I'm gonna have a teensy bit of room to thread the elastic through and I'm going to go ahead and pin this. Now, since this is knit fabric, it won't unravel and you don't have to worry about folding your raw edge under, but if you prefer the look, you definitely can fold the raw edge under and then fold your waist casing down. That one's kind of up to you. Also, if your kids or the kids who will be wearing these have trouble telling the difference between the front and the back of their pants, I might suggest adding a little piece of ribbon or a name tag or a stamp or something to the back so that they can easily tell when they are getting dressed and honestly so that you can easily tell if you're helping them get dressed. One more thing on the name tag if you add or a tag in the back, if you add one on the inside, make sure to stitch it before you stitch this seam that we're pinning because if you stitch it after, you're not gonna be able to get the elastic through. All right, so what I'm gonna do then is go over to the machine and use a stretch stitch, stitch around. I am gonna leave about a little over an inch gap so that I can go back in and thread the elastic before finishing off that seam. Okay, here's what this looks like once that waistband is sewn. I did go ahead and I added a name tag and um, I have a link below for where I and how I did these. So look for that if you want more information. Now what I'm gonna do is this is a 
called a bodkin and um, you can use that, you can use a safety pin. I have a link to this particular one below if you're interested in the same one. But I'm gonna put that on my elastic and then I am going to thread my elastic through that waistband casing. All right, I am going to overlap the two ends of my elastic. I'm gonna to wanna to stitch those together and then I'll pull the elastic in and um, finish sewing up this gap. In the meantime, I'm gonna to try to do as many things as, at once as I can. I also want to put on the cuffs. So I'm gonna turn this right side out, leave this elastic for later. So on the cuffs here, pant cuffs, what I want to do is fold these wrong sides together and then kind of open one side out over the other side so that both the outside and the inside of the cuff are the right side of the fabric. Then what I want to do is I want to point all my raw edges in the same direction. I want to line up the cuff seam with the seam, the inseam on my pants. And I'm gonna clip those together. And then you'll notice that the pants are bigger around than the cuff. So as I stitch this, I'm going to stretch the cuff just until the pants are laying flat. So I've got all three layers of fabric here laying flat, and that's gonna gather the cuff in at the ankle to help hold the pants in place. So I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'll show you how I sew these on as well. Okay y'all, to stitch this elastic together, I'm going to set my machine to a zigzag stitch and then I'm just gonna zigzag those two ends together. And then I'll back stitch to secure it. To sew on a cuff, especially if you're using a serger, but even if you're doing this on a sewing machine, you want to use a stretch stitch, and what you're going to want to do, the easiest way i found, is to put your presser foot inside the circle. So I'm going to put my presser foot in here, and then stretch to make sure that your cuff is laying flat against your fabric and stitch. And always make sure that you've got all three raw edges. And there we go. I've got my cuff sewn on and I can flip it down and you can see how the pant is finished now. All right, y'all, here is what the pants look like when they're finished. You'll notice that the waistband is not particularly gathered and that's because it's already a stretch knit. And then here are the cuffs on the hems on the bottom here, and you're all finished.